why do tech elites heavily restrict or outright ban their own children's use of technology? Bill Gates' kids aren't allowed to use smartphones after a certain time. We often set a time after which there is no screen time, and in their case, that helps them get to sleep at a reasonable hour. Despite being an actual cyborg himself... And I was human. I am human, still. Mark Zuckerberg strictly limits his kids' use of smartphones and television. Asked if his kids loved the iPad, Steve Jobs responded, they haven't used it, we limit how much technology our kids can use at home. Chris Anderson, CEO of 3D Robotics and a father of five, said, we have seen the dangers of technology firsthand. I've seen it in myself. I don't want to see that happen to my kids. Alex Constantinople, the chief executive of the Outcast Agency, restricts her kids' use of gadgets to just 30 minutes a day and bans them, period, for her five-year-old. As Alice Thompson wrote, it's astonishing if you think about it. The more money you make out of the tech industry, the more you appear to shield your family from its effects. Authors Joe Clement and Matt Miles ask, what is it these wealthy tech executives know about their own products that their consumers don't. The most sought-after private school in Silicon Valley bans electronic devices for the under-11s. Why do these people endlessly promote the wonders of technology out of one side of their mouths while privately keeping their own kids away from technology? I'll tell you why. Because they know what they unleashed was designed to be addictive. Addictive behaviour leads to depression. We have an epidemic of childhood depression. Hospital admissions for suicide suicidal teenagers have doubled in the last 10 years. 62% of undergraduate students describe feeling overwhelming anxiety. Depression rates have leapt by 63% for teens and 47% for millennials since 2013. The ubiquitousness and overuse of social media and smartphones has correlated with a surge in youth depression. Eighth graders' risk for depression jumps 27% when he or she frequently uses social media. Kids who use their phones for at least three hours a day are much more likely to be suicidal and it all comes back to addiction. I feel tremendous guilt. It literally is a point now where I think we have created tools that are ripping apart the social fabric of how society works. That is truly where we are. Your behaviors, you don't realize it, but you are being programmed. It was unintentional but now you gotta decide how much you're willing to give up. And I'm not just talking about the dopamine hits you get from reading messages and notifications. Did you know that when you pull down on the screen to refresh your social media feed, it was designed to mimic pulling down on the handle of a slot machine. It was designed to exploit the same psychological susceptibility that makes gambling so compulsive variable rewards. Each time you're swiping down, it's like a slot machine, said former Google employee Tristan Harris. You don't know what's coming next. Sometimes it's a beautiful photo, sometimes it's just an ad. According to Lauren Brichter, the guy who designed the pull to refresh option, even though it could be made redundant, the feature is there to serve a psychological function, to keep people addicted. Harris also blew the whistle on another feature that was designed to encourage addiction. Those Facebook notification alerts were originally blue to fit in with Facebook's color scheme, but designers discovered that when they were blue, barely anyone checked them. So they changed the color to red, and everyone started checking them compulsively. Red is a trigger color, Harris says. That's why it's used as an alarm signal. So they're literally causing little anxiety alarms to go off in your brain when you see these red icons, an anxiety that can only be assuaged when you click or touch on them. A leaked internal Facebook report revealed that big tech knows when teens are feeling at their most insecure or vulnerable. They can manipulate when users receive likes or other notifications, ensuring they arrive at a time when the user is in most need of attention or approval. All of us are jacked into this system, says Harris. All of our minds can be hijacked. Our choices are not as free as we think they are. A handful of people working at a handful of technology companies through their choices will steer what a billion people are thinking today. We've also been turned into outrage addicts. Half of the news media cycle is now just stirring up or reacting to contrived Twitter outrage. According to former Google strategist James Williams, we've habituated ourselves into a perpetual cognitive style of outrage 
by internalizing the dynamics of the medium. We're also addicted to distraction. Did you know that even the mere presence of a cell phone in your line of sight, even when it's turned off, damages cognitive capacity. It's called continuous partial attention. Just by having it sit there on the desk, you're damaging your concentration. And have you noticed this? Even when they're not looking at it, people have to constantly touch their phone like a junkie with an involuntary body spasm. What's fascinating is that a lot of these techies are fully aware of the monster that they unleashed and are now full of remorse. Justine Rosenstein, the Facebook like co-creator, says the social media giant has created a psychologically manipulative dystopia which only cares about profit maximization and that it needs to be regulated like tobacco companies. Another one of the women who helped develop the Facebook like button installed a plugin on her own phone, so she doesn't even have to look at her own Facebook feed. Lauren Brichter turns off his own phone at 7 p.m. and regrets creating social media addicts. I've spent many hours and weeks and months and years thinking about whether anything I've done has made a net positive impact on society or humanity at all. Google and Facebook venture capitalist Robert McNamee says that the smartphone and social media have had horrific unintended consequences on society. He compares social media giants to drug dealers. The average cell phone user taps, swipes and clicks a whopping 2,000 617 times a day. For heavy users it's more than double that, adding up to nearly four hours a day devoted to cell phone use. And those numbers are over two years old, so it's probably even worse now. Go take a walk in the park. Despite the very point of taking a walk in the park being to get away from technology, how many people do you see buried in their cell phones? At this point, I'm seeing at least 50% of the people trapped in cyberspace, even when they're outside. People are so glued to their cell phones, they're now having to install ground level traffic lights in some major cities. Forget virtual reality, how about we return to actual reality? Remember that? People at dinner on their cell phones. People in movie theatres on their cell phones. The CEO of AMC Theatres said, you can't tell a 22 year old to turn off their cell phone. It's like asking them to cut off a limb. There's a reason depression is exploding. And there's a reason why tech elites keep their own kids away from smartphones. They don't want their children to be sucked into this generational cycle of addiction, dependency and unhappiness. That privilege is reserved for you. Please click the big red button to subscribe. It really helps me when you do that. And click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video.